Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. Always a uh, pleasure having you watch these wherever you're tuning in from. And, you know, I, I got an email actually today uh, with some rather uh, disappointing and uh, saddening statistics in it. And uh, it was an email directed to uh, pastoral recipients uh, that highlighted over the last two decades that suicide, depression, and self-harm rates have risen by 30% in our country. Uh, it, it's no surprise to us, uh, or it shouldn't be a surprise to us that that number is real because we see it every day people struggling, people expressing uh, the struggle that they're having mentally and emotionally, and uh, oftentimes it's connected to a physical struggle. And, and all around our world is struggling with uh, the, the idea of mental help. And really at the core of that is they're struggling with where to find hope. Uh, see, there, there are a number of, of uh, causes for this, but at the, at the core of it is this idea of where do we have hope for our days? Uh, and please don't uh, interchange my advice for that of a professional or licensed counselor. I am not one. I'm just a guy with a microphone today. But, but what we can learn from this is that where we find and identify a source of hope is so radically important for our life, but for the world around us as well. And in Psalm 142, we see David kind of hint at that. Far before uh, the, there were statistics and emails being tracked and sent to pastors to help them be better informed as leaders, David was struggling. David was struggling as a person. In verse uh, 2 of Psalm 142, he says, I pour out my complaint before God. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way in the path where I walk. They've hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see there is no one who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. This is, this is a dark moment for David. He's saying that he, he looks to his right and no one cares about him. No one cares for his soul. No one cares if he exists is what he's saying. And, and so here we see this incredibly relatable situation. And if you're struggling uh, in any degree, understand that, that scripture speaks to your situation and, and some of the emotions that you may be feeling today. But let's keep reading. Verse five, he says, I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I'm being brought low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they're too strong. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. And the righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. See, in the midst of this, in the midst of this moment where he's maybe even questioning the, the purpose of his existence, he's looking around going, no one cares if I'm even alive or what's happening to my soul. He pauses and goes, but the Lord is my portion. He says that the Lord is the one who provides for me, the one who helps me, the one who gives me hope for these days. He says, the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. You are my refuge, he says. See, it is so powerful that we can say, even in this moment, David understood his hope was in God. And for us as well, when we have those days, where we have those moments where we're struggling to find a hope, when we've gotten bad news after bad news after bad news, we can remember that God is our refuge, that he is our portion here in the land of the living, but that only happens if we trust in Jesus as our savior. If we have said, I believe that Jesus is the son of God and savior of the world, that he died on a cross to pay for my sins and rose from the grave three days later, and in, in light of all that news, we've made a personal and intentional decision to follow him with our life, then we have that hope. And I think sometimes in the Christian life, we think that this is just the future hope of heaven, and that is incredibly real and valid, but it's also the hope for today. It's the hope that, that when you get the bad news, when you get the diagnosis, when you get the, the termination letter, when you get the difficult news, or when you're just struggling mentally, that God is your refuge and your portion in the land of the living. So I hope today that you would, you would latch on to the hope that's available in Jesus right now, today for you, because God is present and he wants to be your refuge from all the difficulties you're facing and to give you the strength to navigate through that. But I would remiss if I, if I would end this without saying, if you are in a place that you're struggling severely with uh, thoughts of self-harm or even suicide, uh, please reach out for help. National Suicide Hotline is number 988. You can call or text that. Please reach out for help. 
Uh, if it's an emergency, please do that. Uh, if you are in a place where you're struggling, reach out to us for help. Uh, if, if it's maybe a little less urgent and you need some help guiding you through situations or getting advice, because we want you to be whole, to be healthy, to have joy in Christ, and to see the purpose and hope of following him daily. Hope that you have a good day, and I hope that you trust in your refuge, the God of the universe.